coming at you live for the first, for the second podcast of Hemi Thoughts. Welcome to Hemi Thoughts. Hello, and welcome to Hemi Thoughts. Uh, it's been really cold. My face was frozen in a frown today because this semester I don't really like my classes. Hopefully, I never become friends with my current GSIs so I don't hurt their feelings. But seriously, these classes are, ugh, oh my God. Oh my God. I'm taking five classes, and uh, it just feels like a full time job that I hate. It's just so boring and dry. I wish I, I, wish I had happy. Oh, no, that's not happy at all. Today, I got a cold sore. It's forming. I can feel it pulsing. I'm like, it's probably too much information. But like, oh, it's just so tired. Oh, but I've been working out. I've been lifting my spirits and weights. And I don't know what else. I don't, I don't know. I, my memory's been getting kind of bad lately. I wonder if this is a sign. Some kind of thing wrong with me. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, today, my guest here, his name is Ish. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> well, Ish, can you tell Hemi Thoughts viewers on how your past seven days were? My past seven days have been fantastic. Um, this marks the seventh day back in Ann Arbor, and it has been absolutely fantastic. I love my classes, kind of the opposite of you. Um, I'm taking a meditation class, and it is absolutely enlightening, as I will soon be enlightened. <laughs> um, I don't have a cold sore, but my face has also been really cold. And that's about it for these past seven days. Very interesting. That's good. That's good. Um, let me ask you a few questions. One, hold on, let me open my laptop again. I wrote, I wrote them down. Okay. One, what weird, strong opinion do you have? Weird, strong opinion. Ooh, I have lots. Um, oof. Is there, is there a rating for this? Have any thoughts? Like, is there certain viewers, that, like, the viewer discretion advised? Uh, I mean, I would say just keep it PG-13. PG-13. But it wouldn't matter, I guess. My parents don't watch it as much as they used to. I guess they got bored of it. Watch it? Was there animation? You should do animation. Should do animation. I did one episode where it was, like, live really? on the Diag. Yeah, episode 30. Everyone loved that one. They are like, oh, you should do it again. I'm like, no, never again. That was a huge failure. But, yeah. Go ahead. What weird, strong opinion do you have? Weird, strong opinion. The weirdest strong opinion that I have might just be, I mean, I like most things and most people, but I absolutely hate, and I got to process this by saying that I love food and I'm not a picky eater at all, but I hate sunflower seeds more than just about anything in the world. And if I had enough time, I would travel the world for the rest of my life and extinguish all trace of sunflower seeds. Joe, so just the seeds? Do you have any problem with the actual plant? I think sunflowers are beautiful. Um, the seeds might be the most grotesque, Thing, texturally, flavor-wise. I mean, I'm kind of throwing, I'm gagging a little bit just talking about it. Um, if we could please change the subject soon. Be <laughs> oh my God. I'm sorry to have brought this trauma on, on you. Um, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Okay, number two. What would it take for you to notice that you're being followed? In fact, one time my parents put sunflower seeds on one of my quesadillas, on like quesadilla <laughs> night, and they didn't tell me. And I haven't talked to my parents in a while, but I hate sunflower seeds. Um, what was the question again? Well, the question is, what would it take for you to realize that you're being followed? Oh, um, I'm pretty oblivious to my surroundings most of the time, but I have like the advantage of like being tall so I can like see over the crowd. So I like normally like when I'm walking to class, I can like see someone coming that I recognize. So I like have time to like either, you know, prepare like a greeting or avert my eyes. And, um, but that is relevant because we're talking about being followed. So, um, I don't look behind my head that often. I don't look behind me. I'd say 37 minutes. Wait, scratch that. What's the distance from here to North Quad? Because I'll be walking home after this. And that's probably, it takes me about 17 minutes to get home, so minus 20 minutes. Okay. Probably take the full walk home before I like realized I turned around my doorway and realized someone had followed me home. Really? Like you, you don't even hear them like walking behind you? Okay. Well, how closely are they, are they stalking me? Is, are they, is this a, like, are, do they plan to hurt me? Are they like immediately behind me? Should I like feel their breath? They're trying to sell you something. Oh. Um, well, I'd think that they wouldn't, I'd think that they would be like, almost level with me, like trying to talk to me, and get, in, in which case I'd probably notice immediately if they're trying to sell me something. Well, that was, just a, re- that was just a reference to Spongebob, but... Oh, no. <laughs> I, I wasn't allowed to watch Spongebob growing up because um, my mom was worried I would get ADHD, but, uh, and that happened anyway, so <laughs> I, I wish I could watch Spongebob. She's like, is it too late now for me to like, go back and watch Spongebob? No, it's never too late. Just, don't, just stop after 2003, which, oh, which is when the movie came out, and then after the movie, everyone was creatively exhausted, and the original founder left, and then after that, um, got crap. I wish it would just like die, but now SpongeBob got its original creator back, so I don't I don't know if it's I don't think it's like medium now, but uh, I I didn't realize SpongeBob has been going on that long. I don't know if I'd be able to catch up that fast. But speaking of underwater uh, anthropomorphic creatures um, that had movies come out in 2003, Finding Nemo has a sequel coming out this year. Wait, that came out in 2003. Yes, 2003. <laughs> I love Finding Nemo. <laughs> Wait, you knew that. Oh, and that's a perfect category. <laughs> Wait, is this year? Finding Dory comes out, yes, this year. Oh, my God. They have a, they have a teaser that's come out in case you... Uh... I knew it was a thing. I didn't think it was coming out so soon. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, now we know many things. 
like how Finding Dory is coming out, and that is very easy to follow Ish wherever he goes. <laughs> okay, one last question. Uh, what, what would you do if you realize that you're being followed? I think that I would... Okay, so it's not a salesman, right? That reference? That yeah, reference it's just someone following you. You don't know their intentions. I don't know, I don't know their intent. I would... Um, I'd probably just walk a little bit faster and hope that I can make it to my door before anything happens, which brings me to a point, if, if I may. The blue things in the diag, those blue telephones, if someone is trying to, like, kidnap you, I don't think, like, would they give you enough time to, like, go to those blue phones and, like, make a phone? I just don't understand. I think that's sort of a false sense of security, that those little, you know what I'm talking about, those blue glowing phones? I thought that they were just a button. Really? But does that immediately alert the authorities? All that? Yeah. Like, if you press a button, within two minutes, like, police will come. And then people have done it before, like, just, like, as a joke. And then they've gotten, like, fined, and the police came, and, like, you know, it's very serious. Or that's what the tour guide told me, so oh. it might just be a conspiracy. Who knows? Yeah, that might just be what they tell people. So you have to be a really fast kidnapper if you can kidnap. So if they press the button, you have to get out of there in two minutes with your kid. This got really dark. I'm sorry. <laughs> Tips for kidnappers out there. <laughs> I mean, let's flip it to where you're the one being followed. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you would do would, besides, like, getting to mm. your destination? I have very uh, pronounced canines. Uh, a lot of people have said I kind of look like a vampire. And so I'd probably try to bite the person. Interesting. Very interesting. I'll probably just tell them that I have AIDS and that really? I'm on my period. And then, I don't know, because my, my, first, my first fear is like rape yeah. as a girl. And then I was like, oh my God, what, what, do, people, what do people not want? AIDS. And then, and then it's, like, it's like gross. Well, it'd be really bad if you were my potential kidnapper and I bit you because then I would have AIDS. Then. Oh, well, no, I don't, think, I don't think that's how it works. It's, it's like transmission of blood, right? That's like how the, I, know, how I guess, but it's like, it's like you have to have blood on blood. Really? I don't think or eating I think it... So I think it's alive. Can oh. look this up? Is this alive? Should, we, should Jimmy look it up? <laughs> I mean, you want me to look it up? I can, okay, let me look it up. What do you want me to exactly search for? Here, you can type it. I'm holding the, the recording thingy. It's a low, low budget uh, show. Um, this is going to be, this got really educational. <laughs> Let's see. HIV is not spread easily. Only certain bodily fluids from a person who has HIV can transmit blood. Yeah, like there's no saliva. No saliva. You can kiss someone who has AIDS. But I thought it was blood. That would, oh, wait, okay, so blood. So if I swallowed your blood after biting you. But that's not going into your bloodstream. It's going to your stomach. That's true. All right. Debunked. Case closed. We got this. Well, this has been another episode of Hemi Thoughts. Catch you guys next time. Hemi Thoughts.